Hey, it's Chris. Today, you're gonna learn some stuff about your iPhone and it's gonna make you smile. Now, I got some tips for you, some how-tos. Some of this stuff will require the latest version of iOS, which would be iOS 15. It's currently in public beta. Some of these tips are also gonna work with phones running iOS 14. Since the only iPhone I've got that I've loaded with iOS 15 is this purple iPhone, which is a sample, a loaner from Apple, that's the one that I'm gonna be demoing stuff on today. Right now, I'm gonna teach you how to access and use iOS's built-in background noise function. A lot of people aren't gonna wanna pay for a white noise app. So it's pretty cool that Apple has included some white noise or background noise functionality within iOS 15, but here's the thing. It doesn't get its own standalone app. But let's fire this up. So we're gonna go to settings, we're gonna go to accessibility, we're gonna scroll down and we're gonna go to audio visual and then background sounds. It's off by default. Now, as soon as you hit this toggle to turn this on, that's basically like the play pause for this functionality. So let's go into the sound and there's balanced noise, bright noise, dark noise, ocean, rain, or stream. And actually when you start playing a sound for the first time, it's gonna have to download fully before you can actually use it. Now, obviously anytime you wanna listen to these free built-in background sounds, you don't wanna have to get into your settings app and dig around in accessibility to toggle it on and off. So the fastest way to make this happen is just to come in and go to control center, scroll down until you see hearing, tap on that plus next to hearing, and this is gonna place a button in your control center. It looks like an ear. When you tap on it, you're gonna see background sounds off, but I can hit this button on the bottom to turn them on and then adjust the volume. Much better, and it's free. I didn't have to pay $10 for an app. Now, I will say, an app like Dark Noise is absolutely a better experience with many more options, louder sound, etc. But still, if you wanna save some money, this might be the route to take. One of the best things about iPads is that you can drag and drop files and images and text all over the place. Well, with iOS 15, Apple is now allowing us to drag and drop things like images, files, and even certain types of text. Here's a great example. I'm gonna take a screenshot. I'm gonna hold my finger on it until that white border disappears, okay? I'm gonna use another finger and I'm gonna open up my messages app and I've got a text thread going with biz test phone here. That's my other iPhone. I'm gonna drag this and drop it right into that message and hit send. It works in other apps too, of course. Here I'm in Apple Notes and this is one of my favorite Indian food orders. I'm gonna select that text, grab it, drag it, open up a different app and I can drag and drop it into messages without even having to copy and paste. It works with files too. So here I'm in the files app and I'm gonna grab this document and I'm gonna drag it and I'm gonna swipe up with my thumb and then I'm gonna go into messages and drop that file and it just drops the entire text from that pages document into messages and I can hit send. Of course, since it's drag and drop, you're not limited to just dragging and dropping one thing at a time. You can select multiple things to drag and drop. And the thing to point out here is that when you do this drag and drop, it's duplicating your stuff. It's not moving it, so to speak. Real quick, let me just say, if you're liking the vibe of this video, if you're finding it valuable and you'd like to get more tips from me for all your Apple devices, then why not take this opportunity to hit subscribe so you don't miss out. I see the stats. I see a lot of people watching that aren't subscribed. So let's do it. Let's get you subscribed. Now's the time. One of the coolest new features to hit iOS 15 is the ability to select per app font sizes because sometimes you're in an app and the text is way too small because some brilliant person forgot how to format stuff for mobile devices. And other times text can be way too big or it's just not how you like it. So what we need to do is open up settings, go to control center, and then we need to scroll down until we see text size. We're gonna hit that plus icon next to it and make sure that it's added. You can rearrange it to be in whatever position that you want it to be in. So now, when you open up your control panel, you're gonna see this icon with two A's. When you tap on it, you can now adjust the text size. And it's pretty cool because you get that preview up at the top. Now here's where things get good. Notice the bottom of the screen, there's two options, all apps or the particular app that you're on at the moment. And at least in the news app here, the options are to go as small as 80% or as big, as large as 310%. In case you didn't know, there's a really great new feature in iOS 15 called Visual Lookup. If you need help identifying something in a photo, you can put Apple 
Apple's artificial intelligence to work for you to help identify certain objects, things like landmarks or plants or pets or even books. So for the purposes of this demonstration, I've downloaded a photo of the Golden Gate Bridge. I know what that one is, but we're gonna see if this is accurate. I have a photo of a flower and I've got a random dog. So I've saved these to my photos app and I'm gonna tap on the I button down here, the information button, and you can see that I've got this interesting landmark pin here. I'm gonna tap on that. And when I do, I can see that the first box here that's been pulled up is Siri Knowledge. Golden Gate Bridge, it's a Wikipedia article. If I scroll down, there's actually an Apple Maps integration. I can see some ratings. There's a phone number I can call. Who do you call at the Golden Gate Bridge? Or I can just go ahead and get directions there. And then I can also see similar images on the web. Let's head over to this flower image and I'm gonna hit that information icon again. It's recognized that it's a plant, Garden Dahlia. I'm gonna swipe over onto our pet image and I'm gonna hit that information panel once more. It recognizes that this is a dog. It's telling me, yes, this is an Australian Shepherd in the Siri knowledge box. But then underneath Australian Shepherd, it's giving me a second option, the Brittany. And I'm guessing that one of these is most likely correct, or maybe they're kind of the same thing. I really don't know. But still, I know more than I would if I didn't have this option. Here's the thing, if you're using a six digit code to unlock your iPhone, then this little box called the gray key that police can get a hold of can easily crack into your phone against your will in just a matter of a few hours. So what can you do about it? Well, you can stop using that simple six digit code and you can start using a more complex, longer alphanumeric code that's maybe 10, 15, 20 characters long. Now, hold on before you freak out. If you get things set up the right way, you're only gonna have to enter that code when you turn on your phone for the first time after you restart it, or maybe one or two other places. So you do need to remember it, but if you have Face ID or Touch ID enabled, most of the time, you're not gonna have to mess around with it. Get yourself into settings, face ID and passcode or touch ID and passcode. Scroll down to change passcode, enter in your passcode, and then you'll see passcode options appear. If you tap on that, you'll see that it says custom alphanumeric code, custom numeric code, or four digit numeric code. Since I want this to be as strong as possible, I'm gonna type custom alphanumeric code, and I'm gonna enter in my longer passcode. All right, now here's what's gonna be interesting. After you restart your phone and you turn it back on for the first time, you're gonna see a different lock screen. Instead of the digits, I get this place to enter in a longer passcode. Great, so let me lock my phone, and then I'm gonna wake it up, and it just unlocks automatically, swipe in, and you can see it's really not that much of a hassle. Privacy, obviously, is increasingly important in today's crazy world, which is why it's cool that Apple gave us the new private relay feature, which is kind of like a VPN or a virtual private network and that it kind of masks your traffic so that networks that you join at the coffee shop, let's say, or your internet service provider isn't spying on what you're up to. Now, I don't know how up to date you are on how much of your personal information is floating around out there in cyberspace, most of the time without your permission. Spoiler, lots. Enter Private Relay, which works through Safari on yes, your iPhone, your iPad, and your Mac. Now you have to have the latest version of iOS, iPadOS, or macOS, and you have to be paying at least 99 cents per month for Apple's iCloud services. Once you've got your bases covered, you can go into your settings and make sure that this is turned on. To enable this on an iPhone, it's really simple. Go into settings, go into Apple ID, go into iCloud, and then turn on or hit that toggle switch for private relay. That's it, you're set. Once you get that turned on, you have exactly one option to further customize how this works. It has to do with your IP address. Number one, you can choose to maintain general location. On the other hand, if you want even more privacy, there's an option to use your country along with a time zone, which at the end of the day means you will be more anonymous, but you'll also have less accurate information in terms of local information served up to you. So it's a trade-off. All right, well, that's about it for this video. I know you learned something, because I, the professional Apple tech reviewer, learn some stuff while I was putting this video together. You know what I would love if you like this video is if you would subscribe to my podcast. It's the Hey It's Chris podcast. And what people say is it's just like hanging out with a friend for a half an hour or an hour every Friday. And we just talk about what's going on in my personal Apple ecosystem. Maybe talk about some Apple news. It's a good time. And I'd love for you to hang out there. Also, I'm on Twitter and Instagram. It's daily text spelled daily T-E-K-K -K in both of those places. And I'll catch you in the next video. Later.